QuickBooks Online Journal Entry Tutorial. Hey there, my name is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University. Thanks so much for watching the video, and if this is helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, please share the video, I sure would appreciate that. And head to the QuickBooks University at qbuniversity.org to find out uh, a couple of mistakes that most people make in QuickBooks and how to avoid them. Okay, so QuickBooks Online Journal Entry Tutorial. Um, I'm gonna walk you through how to make a journal entry in QuickBooks. If you are not familiar with journal entries or you have not done journal entries, then uh, I would just find a quick tutorial that explains debits and credits. I'm not gonna go into debits and credits too much in this video. I will touch on them, uh, but that is a whole nother topic uh, that you need to understand. So. If you don't understand journal entries, you probably don't need to be making journal entries in QuickBooks. If you have a firm grasp on accounting and making journal entries, then this will make a whole lot more sense. Okay, so here we are on the QuickBooks Online home screen. This is a sample company file, which you can get to through the gear icon when you are logged into your company file. If you have of a, if you have a subscription, you can go to the sample company file to try things out. So it's a great way to just go in and play around and it's not going to mess up your company file. All right. So what you're going to do, you're going to go up to the new button up here. You're going to see other, you're going to see journal entry and we're going to click that journal entry brings up this field here and you'll see just plain old lines, journal number, date, et cetera. It's very straightforward. Now, what a journal entry does is it adjusts accounts in your chart of accounts, okay? So debits and credits either increase or decrease different accounts. And what I mean by an account is checking account, savings account, accounts receivable, prepaid expenses, fixed assets, accounts payable, bills, loans, those are all your accounts. So in your chart of accounts, you've got all these accounts. These journal entries will directly increase or decrease, depending if it's a debit or a credit, uh, those accounts. And so if you need to make an adjustment, it could be depreciation that you need to enter. It could be a prepaid expense that you are amortizing over 12 months you are going to do a journal entry. Now, I have some other videos on prepaid expenses and depreciation, so please check those out. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna make the journal date, all right? So uh, usually, in general, this is gonna be the end of the month. You know, so if you're making a journal entry, generally, it's gonna be the end of the month. It doesn't always have to be. But we're gonna say that this was as of August 31st, 2022. Journal entry number, all right, if you have a certain numbering system, so for example, you know, uh, if we work in a client's file, uh, we will put, you know, the CPA firm name and I will put a dash and put my initials there. That way the client knows that this was done by us and I did it. And so everyone in our firm will put their initials so we know who made these journal entries. So if you have a certain numbering system, you can put that in here. And you can also go up to this gear icon and you've got some options here that warn if a duplicate journal entry, journal number is used. You don't need to check that. See, it's, it's basically unchecked right now. Um, we're going to cancel that. We're not going to turn it on. And the reason I recommend you don't turn it on is because you may use this like THFMJH multiple times. And that's okay. You can have the same journal number. All right. So we're going to leave that as is. So the first thing is, you know, in accounting, any transaction you make affects two different accounts every single time. It can't affect just one account. So for example, if you spend money, it's going to, on an expense, let's say office supplies, it's going to reduce your checking account balance and it's going to increase your office supplies expense. All right. So every single journal entry has to have at least two lines because you have to have a debit and a credit and the total of all your debits and credits has to equal. All right, so let's say we did, we went and we bought some office supplies and we used our debit card. And for some reason, instead of just going in here and entering expense, we're doing a journal entry. We're gonna say checking account and that gets reduced. So a reduction to an asset is a credit. So let's say we spent $125, let's say 125, I'm gonna tab over 
and you can put in your description and you can even assign it to a um, you know a customer or a vendor down here uh, but you don't need to so this one we're not going to all right and then the next line so it's got to have an offsetting debit is this is going to be office supplies office expenses we'll put it as office expenses in this file and you'll see the debit will automatically populate okay so uh that way it balances you got 125 you got 125 debits and credits equal this is a good journal entry and if this was all you were doing then you can say save and new or save and close and go on to the next one now let's say that we spent 125 dollars, but we have to split it between two different accounts we're going to say that we only spent $75 on office expenses, but in the same trip, we also paid for equipment rental. Okay, so let's say we went to the office supply store and we rented some equipment for 50 bucks. So you can now split it between the two, but you see now both of those add up to the 125 because the debits have to equal the credits. So again, you have to have at least two lines, two entries. One has to be a debit, one has to be a credit. You can have multiple lines, and these things can get very long if you're adjusting certain accounts. So now what we do, if we hit save and close, it's now going to record those expenses. Okay, so if I go over here and I go to reports, and let's pull up a profit and loss, and we will make sure this is set for... So it's, uh, we'll do it for last month. All right, so let me go down here, last month, run report. If I go down to office expense, where are we at? Right here, 9308, and I pull that up, you're gonna see my $75 is now showing as an expense. And the other equipment rental, $50 expense will also be in the profit and loss. And in the checking account, you're going to see a reduction of $125. All right, so that's the basics of QuickBooks Online journal entries. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, any comments, please feel free to leave those below. I try to answer as many of those as I can. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.